Hey everyone, Matt here. Let's get right into it. Eight pro drum production tips that you didn't know that you needed. Number one, create cool transitions by reversing your drum sounds. You don't always need to use a big drum fill to make transitions exciting in your song. Using swells, sweeps, and reverses is a great alternative. And while there are a ton of reverse and swell samples out there, sometimes they stick out a little awkwardly and don't quite fit in with the other instruments. So what I like to do sometimes is take drum sounds with a longer sustain, things like a snare or cymbals, and create my own transitions out of those. I'll reverse them, cut off the transient so we don't get any pops, and voila, a transition that blends in with the sound of your instruments because it was actually made from them. You can also use this between phrases to swell into things like big snare hits, which can sound really exciting. Number two, approach your intros or interlude sections with a distorted or ambient version of your main drum beat. What do I mean by that? Here's our main groove in this song. For the intro and quiet interludes in this song, I wanted something that reflected that main groove but wasn't quite as heavy and present. So I took that main drum part and made a roomy, ambient version of it to use in those sections. Altogether, it made a nice variation of the main beat but with a cool new texture. Number three, get more impactful and dynamic drum parts by adding layers. This topic kind of deserves a whole video to itself, which I actually did make. So I'll link you to that video right here. I encourage you to check that out to see how and why you would add different layers to your drums. Number four, create unique textures by reversing percussion loops. This one is a lot of fun, so check this out. I'm starting off with this main drum part in the song here. It sounds cool, but I wanted to add a bit more push and pull within the drums every few bars. So I'm gonna take this percussion chopper here and add a reversed layer of it. Check out what that does. Number five, add vibe to your drums with a room track. Having a room track is essential to putting your drums in an actual space. If you're recording live drums, you'll usually have a few room tracks to work with, but with program drums, sometimes you have to make your own room track and you can get really creative with it. Here's an example. I've got this main groove in the song here. I'm going to take most of that main drum part and add some reverbs and delays to it to create this cool new room track. Listen to the depth that it brings. Number six, add more depth to your drums with delays. This one is similar to number five, but with a slightly different approach. If you're wanting to create a nice open and ambient feeling in your song, or just add some more depth to your drums, then this is a great way to do that. Here's an A-B comparison for you to hear what I mean. Number seven, pan percussion in pairs. Well, that was fun to say. Let's say you have multiple percussion layers in a song. You could leave them panned center down the middle, kind of boring, or you can pan them out to the sides, which will open up the sound of your track. But if you are panning, try to pan in pairs so that one side doesn't stick out more than the other and we keep balance in our stereo field. For example, in this track, I've got both a shaker and a kibasa. 
and instead of leaving them both down the middle where they'll overlap, I'm sending one out to the right and one out to the left. Number eight, create unique percussion layers by messing up stock beats. Most of us have access to stock drum beats like the Logic Drummer or loops from sample packs. And while they're not the strongest on their own, you can take them and recycle them in really cool ways. In this song, I turned this stock loop into this subtle but groovy percussion layer. I just use some EQ to take out the highs and the lows, some heavy compression and distortion from Sound Toys Devil Lock, and brought the volume way down to fit it in. It's a pretty simple approach, but it creates a totally unique percussion layer that I can use. Obviously the sky's the limit here, so just take a stock beat and see what you can do with it. There you have it. I hope these tips and ideas inspire some new drum creativity in your writing and producing. At the end of the day, most of this is just being resourceful and creative with the drum sounds that you have and manipulating and recycling them in unique ways to add some excitement. Let me know in the comments which of these stood out most to you. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.